All right, so last time we looked at models of um, addition, subtraction to you. And today we're going to look at algorithms. Now, let me first describe what an algorithm is. An algorithm is a process by which we do something, okay? So whatever you're talking about being a process, you could call it an algorithm. So throw that into your vocabulary at lunch or at dinner tonight, and somebody will think you're talking about something very impressive. And all it is is just a process by which you do something. That's all it is, okay? So you may not even think about the fact that there are multiple processes for doing addition and subtraction, but there are, and we're going to explore a few of them today. And this is by no means exhaustive, okay? Um, I have other books that I've used before that encounter some of the different ones than what I'm going to show you, um, and some that I'm going to show you today that this is the first time I've encountered in this book. Um, the point is that when you get out and with whatever curriculum you're working with, uh, you need to be able to work with that curriculum with your students. Um, the other thing that this does for you is if you have some student that's just flat out not responding to whatever method it is, this process, this algorithm that you're using, with this, you need some other option to help them to figure out how to do this. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, the first model is a concrete model, and this model goes back to base ten blocks, which we did in class. Do you remember bringing the little red cubes and there were threes? All right, three base. There were base three blocks, and I had base ten blocks as well, um, and then. Um, it also goes along with at least a little bit um, what we're doing the last section of um, drawing a picture. And we did little circles right here, just circle over the screen with your picture. So um, today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at doing this with our base 10 blocks. So um, base 10 blocks, we had, um, we had, remember we had cubes, we call them, we call them unit, no, we didn't call them, we call them blocks, I think, right? The big squares and the little three-dimensional cubes, we call them blocks. We had the big squares, which are squares, and we call them flats. We had the long skinny pieces and we call them longs and then we have the single squares and we call them units. Okay? So we're going to draw this picture. The first one we're going to draw is 34. So I need three longs and I need four little squares. Okay? And then I need 18 so I need one long and I need eight of these little squares. They should look like squares. Mine don't but Okay, forget it. There's eight of them. And you're going to draw each of these inside of a circle. you're going to recognize that all of my little units don't look alike if you're going to pretend like they do. Okay? So those are all little units. And um, one of the things that we did when we talked about base 10 blocks before is we talked about this idea that how many little base 10 unit blocks make them all? 10. So I can collect 10 of them. So I'm going to collect these four and these six and these make one long. and that says long. And um, we would draw another picture then that shows this picture in um, one circle, okay? So we're going to have how many longs? We're gonna have five longs. Because I have three longs here and one long here is four longs. I've got an additional long because I sort of changed up into a bigger um, block. And then how many individual little blocks do I have? Two. And so this value right here is 52. This is a concrete model of addition. It sort of merges a couple of things we've talked about. And it is great for conceptual understanding. But I don't know about you, but I don't want to draw this picture every time. And we wouldn't want that for our students either. But it does give them a basis for what's going on. And it also does a really good job of explaining what we're going to do in a couple of other of these, okay? So the next one, the expanded algorithm, has that same sort of a feel to it, um, but it does it without a picture, okay? So three, four, the number 34, actually means that we have three times 10 plus four times one, right? It's supposed to be one again. And 18 means I have one times 10 plus eight times one. This is expanded form. We've looked at this before too, haven't we? Okay. 
So when we're looking at this and we're counting and we're adding things together and whatnot, what this actually allows me to do is to say that I have 4 plus 1 times 10, and I have 4, not 4, 3, sorry, 3 plus 1 times 10, and I have 4 plus 8 times 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4 times 10, and, and I have 4 plus 8, which is 12 times 1, and we can talk about the fact that 12 is enough to trade up to the next value, right? I can actually break 12 apart into a 10 and a 2 separately, so I can actually write down that this is 4 times 10 plus 1 times 10 plus 2 times 1, and I can combine these two that are both times 10 in the same way that I did before, and I can talk about that being 5 times 10 plus 2 times 1, which is 52, and, and that's really the way it works. That's, that's really why we're allowed to do this. Now, I put the standard algorithm on here because I want you to see that that's what you do when you do the standard algorithm. But you probably don't think about it that way, and maybe perhaps even nobody's ever said to you, this is why this is done. So when you have 34 plus 18, what we do typically, the method that you probably learned, is you start in the ones column, and you add, you say four plus eight, and that is 12, and you don't really write a 12 down, do you? You actually write down a 2, and you carry a 1. So why in the world did you carry a 1? Because that 1 represents 10. Yeah? So you put it over in the tens column now, because they actually, what you did is you carried 10 over. And then you have 1 plus 3 plus 1, which is 5. Now, the expanded algorithm can be reduced as well in one other way. So I want to come back up here and show you a reduced form of the expanded algorithm that's really pretty friendly, whereas the mess on the left is maybe not so much. One way of doing the expanded algorithm is to actually do what we just did. That is, write down what is 4 plus 8. And what is 4 plus 8? 12. And instead of what we just did a minute ago, we're really going to write down 12. And we did this because this is 4 plus 8. And then we're going to add the 3 and the 1 together because that's really 30 and 10. And what is 30 plus 10? That's 40. And then we can add 12 plus 40, which is 52. And then it's not really so hidden as to what we did with this sort of carry the 1 business. It's much more clear what happened to the 1 and why it worked. But of course it worked for the same reason, right? That's okay. for expanded? Yes, that's another version of expanded form. These are equal versions of expanded form. Right here. So if it asks you to do one in an expanded form, uh, you can pick the one on the right, that's fine with me, it doesn't matter. But they're both sort of descriptions of expanded form. Okay? Alright, give me just a sec. Alright. Um, there's a couple other algorithms that are not directly related to the standard algorithm like the ones we just did for. Um, the next one we're going to look at is left to right addition. Um, and that's actually kind of nice. Um, how do you read? From left to right. And how do we do math? From right to left, which is a little bit strange, isn't it? It is, and, and it's really common um, to say for students to want to do their math and say the way the same way that they would do their um, read. And so this sort of handles that issue, and I changed the numbers to be a little bit larger so you can actually see how the numbers work when we do this. Now it's going to feel somewhat like what I just did on the previous screen with expanded form, except that we're moving from left to right. Okay. So the first thing I do is I'm going to look at this 1 and this 3, and what I'm really doing is I'm adding 1,000 plus 3,000. Oops. What is 1,000 plus 3,000? 4,000, and we write that down. 4,000. And then we move to the next digit. We've got 5 and 2, but it's not really 5 and 2. What is it? 500 plus 200, which is 700. And we move to the next digits. We have 3 and 1, which is really... 30 plus 10, which is 40, 
And then we move to the four and the eight, which are really four and eight this time, and four plus eight is 12. Um, and then we can actually go straight down and add them up. We can even still move from left to right. Yeah? So this is 4. 0 and 7 is 7. 0, 0, 4 and 1 is 5. And then this 2 comes down here and I've got 47, 52. And I do everything from left to right. So some curriculums are really pushing the left to right approach. So now you can see what it looks like and how it works. There's another one that looks a little bit crazy the first time you see it. Has anybody seen lattice algorithm before? Not. I've only seen it. Anybody else? Okay. okay. So the lattice algorithm um, is an interesting one, and I see it. I have seen it used more with multiplication than I have with addition. Um, but you can use it with either. So let me show you how it works. Um, we're setting the problem up very much like we just did. Addition like standard algorithm. The difference is that underneath it, we're going to make, oh, a grid. Sorry, my grid's a little bit wide. I'll make it look a little bit better. And I've got a block for each placeholder, but what I'm going to do with my blocks is I'm going to divide them in half diagonally. add up just like we normally would. So what is it? We can add left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter here. So move whichever direction you would like. Um, we'll go from left to right just because I just did it and it was kind of fun. So what's one plus three? Four. So the four goes in the bottom right hand corner underneath the three and the one. How about eight plus two? That's ten. The one goes on top and the zero goes on bottom. The two digit number is the top one and the bottom one. Okay. How about nine plus one? 10 as well, so 1 on top, 0 on bottom. 4 plus 8, 12, so we do 1 on top and we do 2 on bottom. And then what we do is we actually add up along the lattice lines. So this one right here, we're adding up diagonally. This is 2. This isn't so good, but what you do is you do 1 plus 0, which is 1. And then over here, I've got 1 plus 0 again, which is 1. And then I have 1 plus 4, which is 5. And 5112, 5112 is the solution. So it kind of keeps things a little bit more kind of orderly, at least in some sense. Um, but you have a little bit more writing involved in doing it. So you've got give and take with any of these systems, these algorithms. Okay? There's always a good and there's always a bad. Scratch algorithm. Has anyone seen scratch algorithm before? Okay, so again, this one is one where um, you'll notice the different numbers I have here. I don't have long numbers. I actually have several shorter numbers added to it. Scratch addition works really well when you're adding up multiple things together. Okay, so two-digit number, not two-digit numbers, but two, two, you know, things added together. I mean, scratch addition works okay. It's not really all that different. But when you have a bunch of numbers added up, it helps you. So let me show you how it works. We're going to write the numbers just like we did on the last one, all on top of each other. And we add from right to left. Okay, so we're back to right to left in the standard way that you remember in addition. But the kicker is that whenever I get to a number that's bigger than 10, I'm going to scratch. Let me show you. I have 4 plus 8, which is 12. I put a scratch through the 8, and I remember the units digit, which is 2. So in my mind, I don't have 12 anymore. I've got 2. Everybody with me on 2? 2 plus 9 is 11, bigger than 10. So I scratch, and I remember the units digit of 11, which is 1. And then I have 1 plus 7, which is 8, and I write down my 8. So the beauty is that I never added anything together that exceeded 10. I never had to keep in my mind a two-digit number plus something else. And that's really good because when we teach our children you know, flashcard addition like I was talking about before, all those flashcards, don't they always have one digit by one digit? Usually, I mean, we usually don't do a flashcard that's 12 plus 37. They're not a flashcard like that, right? 
So here's what happens then, is you count your scratches. How many times did I scratch? Two times. And each of those scratches really represented the number 10, didn't it? Which means that's 20, so I carry a two. So I'm still carrying, just like I would before. I just don't have to keep in my mind the large numbers that are accruing as I go. And then I can do the same thing. So two plus three is five plus one is, plus six is 12, so I scratch and I remember the number two. Two plus eight is actually 10 and I scratch and I don't have anything so I can write down a zero. How many scratches? Two. So in theory, I've got a two over here that gets carried down because I don't have any hundreds. So this is 208. What do you think? Can you explain it one more time? Sure. Can I create a different example for us? Yeah. All right. All right. So let's see. Um, we'll do a three-digit one just for fun. I remember the units digit which was one because 11 is one one because I remember the second one so I've got the number one in my mind now I have one plus seven is eight, eight. so no scratching because I'm, I'm below ten and then eight plus two is ten so I scratch and I'll put my zero here because <coughs> the unit digit of the number ten is zero how many scratches did I make two, two so I carry a two because each scratch really was the number ten number 20, so I put a 2 in the 10s column. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 9 is 14, so I scratch and I remember the number 4. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 8, 15, so I scratch and I write down a 5 for 15. How many scratches? I promise it's not always two scratches. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. So I scratch and I remember the 2. 2 plus 9 is 11. So I scratch and I write down a 1. And I scratch two times. I'm really good at making examples on the spot. And then I have a 2 over here. So this is 2,100.
Okay. Um, so I have 34 minus 18 here. Yeah? Hold on. Hold on. 30, right now, 34 minus 18. <coughs> um, this one's minus, though. I'm going to subtract the addition last time. Um, so in order to do 34 minus 18, I have to be able to, you know, cancel out the same values from both sides. That's subtraction. I'm taking it away from an idea. So um, I have 34 here on the left, and I don't really have 18 to be able to take away. At least it doesn't look like it. You guys see what I mean? Yeah. Um, right now it looks like I can't take away one long and eight units because I don't have eight units. How am I going to change something here to get rid of that? How am I going to get the eight units? Yeah, I need to, to, to yeah, I need to take one of these longs and I need to break it apart. I think that's 10. They're not all equal, but I think that's 10. So the image that I should have now instead is actually two longs, right? And then I should have, this is 10 and four more. one of them, I remove a one, one long, and I remove eight units, three, six, there's eight of them, and we drew pictures somewhat similar to this last time, but with discs or circles, and I'm left with what? Now one long, six, and six units. Which means the subtraction gave me what number? <coughs> 16. Does that make sense? You know, it's a concrete model. We want to draw it every time, but it does give visual representation for a concept that we're about to do with just numbers. What you remember or know as borrowed. Um, more accurately and more commonly is referred to these days as regrouping. We regrouped the number one long as to in, into making it um, 10 units. Okay? So that's expand or the uh, concrete model. Let me talk about the expanded model. So the expanded model um, looks like the expanded model from before. And so you have 3 times 10 plus four times one, and you have, or you can put parentheses around it if you prefer, uh, minus one times 10, plus eight times one, and it's subtraction, so we subtract all of that, <coughs> like so. And of course the problem is that I, I can't take eight away from four, right? So I have to regroup, I have to take this three and I have to take one of them away and make it a two because what I need is I need to change that that one that one one of those um, long into ten units so ten units plus four units for a total of fourteen units and then I can subtract so I can actually write down now two minus one times ten plus fourteen minus eight times one so 2 minus 1 would be 1, 1 times 10, plus 14 minus 8 is 6 times 1, which is the number 16. And of course you remember your standard model, right? It's the same thing as we just did, you just don't have the expanded form part of it. I can't take eight away from four, so I have to borrow. And the reason that the three becomes a two is because I took away one of them. But I took away one ten. One ten is the number ten. That's why the ten now in the column to the left, to the right, rather. So ten plus four is fourteen. So that's what I really have. And then I can do fourteen minus eight is six, and two minus one is 
one. Okay, let me show you a bit unrelated idea. Well, it doesn't follow the senior algorithm, okay? And this method is, um, it's really very nice. Allow yourself space, start on the far left of your paper, okay? I want you to write down 834 minus 158. Okay, so the reason that this is difficult, quote unquote, to subtract is because I have to borrow twice. Um, the 5 is bigger than the 3, the 8 is bigger than the 4, neither of those is particularly friendly to just do without any kind of borrowing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a value to the second number so that it makes it easier to subtract. In particular, the nicest numbers to subtract are numbers with lots of zeros in them, aren't they? Easy to subtract if you don't have to actually take anything away. So what I'm going to add is I'm going to add the number 2 to this number because that will turn it into 160. And it puts a zero in the 1 slot. But if I add a number to the number at the bottom, I'm also going to have to add a number to the number on top. That's the only way it stays equal. This becomes 836, which is friendlier to subtract than it was before. Because I don't have to borrow twice, I would only need to borrow once. Does that make sense? Okay. But really, I still have to borrow once, and is there a number that I can add to the 160 on the bottom that makes it friendlier? 40 would be awfully nice. But again, if I add it to the bottom, I have to add it to the top. So what is 836 plus 40? 876. And what is 160 plus 40? 200. And what do you get when you subtract this? 676. So, every time you see something new, it always feels awkward. I'm like, why would I want to do that when I can do it the way I want to start it? Okay. This kind of stuff is the kind of mental math that I do all the time. I never subtract 19 or I never subtract something from 9. I would subtract 20 and add one back on. That's what I do. Why would I want to subtract something with a 9? Subtracting 9, that's just a mess. I always have to borrow. It's almost always when I subtract something with a 9. Much easier to subtract 10. So I subtract 10 and then I add one back on. I subtract one too many. This is what I do. I don't do it with big numbers in the head like this, but this is what I do. Okay? So this is called equal additions algorithm. I equally add the same value to the top and the bottom. So at the end, you have to subtract the two back on? No, because you added it in both places. Yeah, you added it in both places. So instead of actually, and you could do it. I mean, like, right, we can go back over here. We'll check just for fun. So if I want to do this one and I have to borrow, I have to turn the 3 into a 2, and the 4 becomes a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. Of course, two is not big enough, so I take the eight and make it a seven, and I turn the three into a twelve, or the two into a twelve. <coughs> twelve minus five is seven, and seven minus one is six seventy-six. Just like that, four. Okay. It's an interesting algorithm. Okay. And I will guarantee you, it will come home with my daughter because it already has. And when it does, my husband says, "Well, why would I want to do that?" And you may think by yourself too, why don't you do this other way? And my daughter understands the other way, why would I want to teach her this? Because you have to remember not everyone thinks the way you thought. And for some of you, and for some of your students, they're not going to think that this, the way that you know it, makes any sense to them either. So we have other methods to be able to explore along that line. Okay? Alright. And if that worked fun enough, We're going to do some addition and subtraction in other cases. Oh, oh, yes, we are. We are, and it's going to be so much fun. So I want you to remember, I don't want you to remember base 8. What digits are in base 8? Zero through seven. Zero through seven. We always stop one shy, right? Okay. This is not that bad, Beth. You will be okay. All right, so we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the reason I bring that up is because I don't want you to forget that because as we work, if you ever tell me that you've got an 8, you've got a problem. If you tell me we've got a 9, we've got a problem, because there aren't any 8s and our 9s in base 8. Okay? 
So I want you to think about this, and the reason I want you to think about this is because what it does is it puts you back in the mindset of how your students will feel in first to second grade. Okay? It's how they're going to feel when they have to do these different methods, or when they have to learn when they carry and when they borrow, and when they do these different operations, because you have to stop and really think again, because you're not very comfortable and familiar with base eight, like you are with base 10. Okay? So, we're gonna do this with a standard algorithm. Let me move this over, actually. We'll just do this. Oh, okay. I want to show you a couple of the different methods for doing this so you can see. So we're going to do 3, 4, and 1, 7. And we need to make sure that when we're done that we put our answer with a little 8 beside it down our subscript, okay? Because that's part of it. All right, so 4 plus 7 is actually what number? 12. 12, sorry. 12? 11. 11. I just left on my phone. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in base 10, when we did standard algorithm with the number, and we wrote down a one and we carried a one over, all right? Now, some of your students don't think that way. They don't know um, those, those multiplication or not multiplication, those addition facts off the head. They may do a Kayla and they give you the wrong number, right? So a lot of the students, what they do is they count with their hands. Do you guys count with your hands ever? Did you ever count with your hands? I still count. Yes, okay. So lots of children and lots of people, period, we count with our hands. So I want you to think about this. The difference is that in base 10, the point when we stop counting with our hands is when we get to 10, and then we start to go to 11 and so forth. We run out of digits. I've got a four here, and I don't know if your teachers did this when you were in school. Mine did this. Okay. I don't think that they do that as much anymore, but. Um, so when we're counting four, we count four, and then we have five, six, seven. But what's after seven in base eight? One, zero, one, one, and one, two, and one, three. Okay, so let's count with our hands. So you know you have seven of them, so put seven out of your hands, okay? Everybody's got seven up, okay? Not the game seven up. Oh, yes, yeah. seven up. Certainly not the game seven up for me too, okay? So we have seven, seven. Hands, seven up, okay? Seven right here. And we started with the number four. So we have four, and then we have five, six, seven. What comes after seven? One zero, one zero, one, 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 two, and one three. You're at the number one, three. <laughs> so you put down a three and you carry a one. When she said that, because I said that she's not a sermon. You're at the number. And there was like that. Okay, one plus three plus one, though, we can do that without going past eight, correct? I don't see in your dogs. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> What's one plus three plus eight? Five. This number is five three base eight. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Okay. All right. Here's the number seven. Let me show you the dots. You count this one one time, you count each of these two times when you count. Why? Because it adds it to seven. Oh, like, so you. this is one way, and maybe it's ancient, maybe you guys didn't learn it. Did some of you learn it? I don't know. You gave nods on dots. So I learned um, it with three dots. I think you just did one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So every number had dots. And the number of dots gave you a way to count without using. I learned like with like where you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in a weird thing. I don't know. Like you got to say something? Like where it's on paper, like I did a paper, but say like it was like dot, 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 dot like six, uh -huh. and then seven, eight, nine. You'll have to show us sometimes here. We hear it. Well, it if you don't like the dots, I don't care. It doesn't matter. You can hand this, okay? So it's just, I thought it was good. What happens when you don't follow your notes? Let me do one more example of this, like the other method for another, another, another method for doing this, okay? I want to do the, um, well, which one did I have written down? Um, I want to do, let's do scratch, okay? Because you guys kind of liked that one. Um, we're going to try scratch edition. So here's the number four, okay? So we have the number four, 
And we're going to count with our hands again, too. Okay, so we've got seven. Okay. So you have four, and you've got five, six, seven. And then this is one zero. Okay? So I'm going to scratch this. You're at zero. You have three more left. One, two, three. You have three more left after you got to eight. So you did three. And then I counted one scratch, so I write number one. One plus three plus one is five. five. So this is five, three. Base eight. Well, you can start with a bigger number if you want to. How we start with seven real quick? Let's pretend like we started with seven and add four to it. Put the number four up. Okay, what comes after seven in base eight? One zero. One zero. So this is one zero. One one. One two. One three. I don't have any more numbers in my hand to count to, so it's one three. So we're done three and I'm carrying one. Oh, okay. Why would it be nine? What's that? Why would it be nine? There's not a nine. There's not an eight or a nine in base eight. Okay. Remember my digits? They stop at seven and then they go to one zero. One 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 two. All right. All right, we gotta stop because another class is gonna come in and they're gonna want their classroom. So have a great couple days. I'll see you guys all on Wednesday. And if you have questions, come see me.